Okay, um, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but we tried to do a stream today, and I tried to make sure that it was happening early enough for all the lovely people in Europe who normally get screwed over by an evening stream to participate, because, you know, though I'm at a cabin this week, we've been zooming like crazy for work, so, I mean, like, if you can zoom, you can stream, right? Not true. So, instead, I'm going to uh, do something I've been planning to do for a long time, because I want to give people something to watch, even if we can't be all interactive and shiz about it. So, I'm going to do this video about how to sculpt Nurgle! Yay, Nurgle! Nurgle is pretty easy to sculpt, but only if someone shows you how, with absolutely no preparation, and having not really sculpted these things before. I'm gonna try it out! And I'm recording this on OBS, so I hope it works, because I've also not done that before. So let's see. Okay, so you get your green stuff. Um, for this I'm gonna be using a combination green stuff and epoxy sculpt. Um, I mixed this up and I stuck it in the freezer yesterday. So it's, uh, it's still pretty good. The freezer here is pretty cold. So yeah, it's just one part green stuff, one part epoxy sculpt, because that's what I really like to work with. And I'm going to be sculpting most things on this flat surface here. I'm not going to do the standard thing that I do in the how to sculpt videos where I do like macro mode and micro mode because, well, this is both at the same time. So I'm sculpting them in real size. And I'm not going to edit this video, so there might be random pauses and shit like that. But that's all to make sure that I get it online today, right away. Because even though I've got shitty upload speed here... Um, I think it'll probably be good enough to upload this so people can watch it maybe later tonight, maybe tomorrow. Here's hoping. Okay, so just to review, beginning of any How to Sculpt video, these are my three weapons of choice. We have the old Games Workshop sculpting tool, which is a knife tool for sharp edges. We've got the silicone shaper. This one is a bullet silicone shaper that I got from my lovely friend Hydra. You probably have a silicone shaper that looks like this, because that's the annoying shape that they sell them with in, in North America. You wouldn't think there's that much difference between these two, but this one's really good for like smooth and stuff. This one is okay, but not great. Um, if you can't get this fancy bullet shaper, something that'll work similarly... Oh, I actually don't have one in the normal size. Is something like this. Um, so this has got a cup right here, and it's got like a, a rounded edge here. You can kind of use that similarly uh, to what this can accomplish, or you can definitely use this tool, which is my number one go-to, which is a spoon tool. Um, wheel, a beal wax carver, it's also called. Um, some people call it an elevator tool. It can be uh, a dental tool. Um, strangely enough, um, Army Painter sells a three-pack of sculpting tools, and it has a spoon in it that looks really good. This might look like a very simple tool, but it's actually hard to find one that has this nice smooth spoon shape on it. Um, so yeah, I love that one. And then other tools appearing in this video will probably be something like this, which is a ball burnisher tool, sometimes called an embossing tool. It has different sized balls on either end. This is all review for anyone who's watched my tools video, but in case you're just coming into this and you've not seen that video, um, here's a quick review for you. Uh, I might be using this pokey tool it's sometimes useful. It's just basically a nail or like a pin, but it's on a fancy handle. Why don't I just start and we'll see what we use. And as I pull things out of my magical box, I'll try to tell you what they are. All right. So the first thing that I thought about sculpting, um, it's pretty easy. Nurgle, you get a lot of fly stuff, like blue bottle flies or whatever the heck. So you get a lot of like fly wings as sigils on Nurgle. That should be pretty easy to sculpt. So let's do that first. So what I'm going to do, this is not sticking, oh, of course it's not sticking, a little too wet. Keep your fingers wet so the green stuff doesn't stick to them, but don't get your surface too wet or it won't stick to it. So what I'm going to do, I'll do this two different ways. So the first way is just, just say that you wanted to sculpt a flat uh, fly wing to attach to something. You could do it on a flat surface and then peel it off, or you could just sculpt it right onto the surface where you want it to appear. Whenever sculpting, you can always use uh, reference photos. There we go. So the other tool that you need to use is lotion. It puts the lotion on its tools. It puts the lotion on its tools or it gets the hose. This is what I use for lubricating my tools when sculpting with green stuff. What I'll typically do is I'll just take some of this stuff, I'll put it on the back of my hand. Man, you never needed to look that closely at the back of my hand. How sexy is that? 
And then as I'm working, I can quickly just go in with a tool, wipe it in here, wipe off the excess, and literally that much is all you need. You can't even see that. That's just like oil on the tool. That will keep the green stuff from sticking. So yes, I use Nivea. You can also use um, petroleum jelly, like uh, Vaseline, but this has always worked for me, so I've not experimented with anything else. You can also use water instead of using cream to lubricate your tools, but it just dries out faster than this does. Once you put this on your tools, it'll last for a while. Okay, so yeah, if you see me like wiping with white stuff on my tools, that's what it is. Okay, so back to sculpting this wing. So I'm just going to smooth this out. I've never done this before, so if it's horrible, I'm sorry, but we'll see. Let's learn together. Let's have some happy accidents together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into like a two wing shape. How you get on some Nurgle models. Someone's going to be pissed. I can't remember who it was, but someone on the live stream, or no, someone who messaged me is like, oh, thank God you're not sculpting Nurgle. Everyone always sculpts Nurgle. Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. Sorry, buddy. We're doing Nurgle. But just because I want to make it clear how easy this stuff is to people. And we've got a nice curve there for the bottom of the wing. And then we want a nice curve here, kind of like a heart shape. And then they'll be split down the middle. So I'll try to talk this through as I'm going, but I'm talking to myself, so it's not... I may just focus on stuff and not speak, but hopefully it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, this wing is too big. So we got a loose wing shape there. This is where they connect to the body. Okay. So, when you look at a fly's membrane, it has a bunch of little kind of like chambers in it. Again, reference photos of your friend. I should probably look at a reference photo of an Ergo model before I do this. We got this kind of thing. Oh, we, we're pretty much there. I could show you how to sculpt this thing. That's easy. If you want to sculpt this thing, you're pretty much already there. No, that's easy. Okay, let's find a better one. Well, you can look at the kind of those bloat flies or whatever, Nurgle models, as inspiration for how you want your wing to look. Rot fly, is that what that's called? So we got these wings. So they've got kind of like chambers that kind of like taper. Okay, we can figure that out. So the challenge here is that on a fly's membrane, the lines dividing the different sections are raised and then the other parts are like sunken down. So you can't just like cut in lines on this. So what you're gonna do, or what I would do, oh, I touched it with my phone case and now it's got a cool texture on it. Nice. The tool I would use for doing this is one of these ball burnisher tools. Um, and in fact, I might go even smaller than that. You can get them in smaller ball sizes. I would just kind of, of course, put some putty on, I mean, some cream on the tool and just kind of like dimple in the sections. So you got those raised parts in between, the membrane parts. I'm not loving this. Okay, never mind. Abort. Um, let's do, let's use a silicone shaper for this. So I got like a, a really thin, small, flexible silicone shaper. Getting some Nivea on it. This will let you get smoother parts in between the membrane parts. So they kind of start thin at one end and they expand out. It's kind of what it looks like. This is not going as easily as I thought. Shit. That is looking terrible. Oh, maybe this, the secret is this because they're this shaped anyway. Put the point in. Hmm. This is literally me trying to figure this out as we go. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to define the membranes that kind of like go between the wings. Like it's almost like there's like veins going between them. So this is literally how I figure stuff out. I just try and sculpt it and then I fuck up and then I find a better way to do it and I fuck up again. And I try to find a better way to do it, and I just keep fucking up, and then eventually, hopefully, I figure it out. Hmm. 
I don't know, no, that looks like some kind of like rotted corpse and not a fly wing. What we can do is if we can get the rough shapes that we want. Hmm. Because what we can do now is we got all this like weird, like uh, levels, but we could take something like this, get some Nivea on it, and kind of flatten this. No, it's not there yet. Hmm. I need a better reference photo is what I need. Oh, house fly wings. There we go. So this is what we're going for. Interesting. So we do have to have those kind of like angled chambers. Okay. Let's try this again. Maybe they need to be longer. Maybe that's the secret. This is looking a little better. Apparently reference photos are helpful. Who knew? Sorry. I was raised from a small child that I should just wing it. Lego instructions? Who needs Lego instructions? Just wing it. Wing it! Get it? I'm sculpting a wing. <laughs> okay, so we're getting there, kind of. I like it a little better than I did before. I think my issue now is that there's too much depth, like, difference between the, the levels. Come in with a flat silicone shaper and try to clean it up a bit. No, I don't know if I like that better. Because that's kind of like the texture of the fly wing looks like it should have those kind of like long, those lines, those indentations in it. This is why you just sculpt what you know. It's easy. Don't learn. Just keep sculpting the same thing over and over again. Actually, I think I just need to clean up the mess I made before and start from a clean slate because it's... Maybe make it a little thinner. So the other thing I was going to show you, I'm like, oh, there's two ways that we could do this. So this is the way where we're sculpting it from uh, scratch and we're doing it all in green stuff. The other way that I thought about it was kind of like laying a, a, a grid onto a piece of plastic card. Like if you're using the plastic card as the fly wing, then you just kind of like build up the membrane on top. And we wouldn't have this problem where the, the fly wing is too thick. So I'm just smoothing out the green stuff and also stretching it um, to make it thinner. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we have too much green stuff. There is such a thing. Still keeping that kind of heart shape. And I'm not going to edit this out so you can watch me fuck up. Isn't that great? It's like a live stream, but with no comments. Only me talking to myself. Oh, that's nice. I'm getting kind of like a spoon shape where I'm getting like the, the kind of edge of the wing membrane. I'm liking that. Maybe I should extend that down here. There's like a, a perimeter, which I'm liking the look of. Maybe if I don't talk, I'll just speed up the video. So we're not here all day. Let's cut that separation between two wings. Actually, this work will probably be easier with the silicone shaper. Of 
course, I didn't start with the shit I know how to sculpt for Nurgle. Tentacles, pustules, all that stuff. I start with the hard shit. Oh, that's kind of interesting how it's... Again, this tool is the best. I'm getting the kind of, like, suggestions of the shapes that I want. Sorry, I know you can't see this, but it's got to happen. It's not always easy to sculpt way down there. Okay, now let's try that silicone shaper tool, the flat one. Okay, let's try this. I'm loving that. Maybe now is when I use my bulb burnisher tool? Who knows? Because I've used this before when trying to sculpt like veins onto something. Too big. Just trying to flatten it. I thought this would be easier. <laughs> I'm not loving that. I think what I'm finding is that I was trying to make these membranes too, uh, like, the the sides of them too steep, whereas when I do it like this, and they're just kind of like, like, picture a W, the section of the part of the W where it, like, comes up, that's kind of what the membranes are, and then it just kind of slopes down into the, the valleys on the wing, and I'm doing it that way, and I like it a lot better. Like, the transition seems softer. 
between the raised part and then the valley. It's feeling better. Also, these like bigger parts down here look more wingish. This has been annoying. Who said sculpting Nurgle was easy? It's a pain in the ass. Let's see if I fuck it all up by doing this. I feel like that's maybe a passable fly wing. see the angle on it. These are too steep, so I'm just trying to level them out. More of a shallow slope up to the, the inter intervening parts. So it's all about like these like kind of um, the membranes between these kind of like cells in the wing. So I feel like what makes it. But the transition between the membranes and the cells can't be too pronounced or else it, it looks wrong. Kind of rounded at this end. And then you can kind of better define the edge by cutting away the excess. Fuck off here. And firming it up like that. Let's try the other side before I get too carried away, thinking I've solved this. Up there. Get out of here, I'm just gonna wet my whistle. Okay, so as with everything else, the solution. Oh, thanks, light. Light's going away. That's what happens when you sculpt by sunlight. Um, as a solution with everything, this is the solution, but not everyone has this. So what am I gonna show you? Silicone shaper. Is your friend. I guess you could probably do it with a ball burnisher. Let's see. You just gotta more like smooth it over rather than stippling it in. So we got a membrane here or a cell here. And then we got a cell here. Watch this one be better, because it's the second one. Maybe slightly smaller ball burnisher. So skinny at this end, getting thicker at the back. Like a teardrop, kind of. Actually, this might be working better than the silicone shaper. Because the natural balliness of the burnisher, I think, works with the the way I'm expecting these membranes to look. Like it gives a, a texture to them that is conducive to fly wings. So these membranes are longer, these ones are shorter. I'm trying to decide which ones I like better. Or uh, the cells or whatever in the wing. Ooh, 
Ooh, give me a little bit Just got to smooth out those transitions with a silicone chaper. This one will probably be useful. That's the one I was describing earlier that's kind of like cupped in the middle and then it has like a round edge on the back. Let's try that. To kind of smooth out these transitions. Lube it up with some Nivea. Oh, and the curve of this is useful here because we want to do the kind of curved bit at the end. Clean that up a bit. I think I can bring this up higher. Uh. Sorry, I'm like hunched over a table here. So I'm seeing if I can adjust slightly so I'm not quite so dying. Well, now we can fix it. Oh, let's get you down in there. See how I fucked it up? I flipped it and I pushed it into the table. So now it's got table texture on it. But you can still kind of see where the channels were. But you know what? If you turn this on an angle, you can make it a little thinner. You can of course modify the shape of your membranes and all that, your chambers on the wing. So I'm just kind of rounding them out at this end, and then making them pointy at this end, where they point towards the body of the fly. Pointy at this end, round it out at this end. Don't want those edges too steep. Oh, that seam between them is not defined, that's not good. I guess one's kind of on top of the other, that's okay. Oh god, this is boring. Learning! Yay. Pointy, pointy. Roundy, roundy. Okay, and the channel between them. Ah, crap. Oh, why is this dim again? This is pissing me off. Somewhere away. That's a little better. Okay. Going down now, buddy. And you can go in and obsess over it with a ball burnisher tool to better define it. You can also give it kind of like a texture on the membranes because now they're pretty flat if you kind of do some some bumpy bump on them. I think that'll help them look a little more insect-like, maybe, hopefully. Or just kind of bump in lines. So you're doing like sub cells within the cell. Kind of 
and drag it. That's not so bad. Well, it's getting to be kind of a cool texture. I don't hate it. So that's just a small ball burnisher tool. Give it a little bit of texture to those wing cells, we're calling them. Because I'm sure that's the scientific name. Oh, this is not horrible. We just learned how to sculpt some spy some fly wings. Look at us. Hell damn ass kings. So by doing this, you're kind of like giving the suggestion that there's other little veinies in here. And you can kind of use these to better define your round sections at the end of each wing cell. Don't go too crazy on it because you, you don't want to make those walls between them too pronounced. It's not half bad. Not have good either. Okay. And then, if you want to, you can ruin everything by going in and trying to tidy up the edges. Get them in that fly E shape. Poke in here. Uh, I don't know if I love that, but whatever. Uh, I want the sides to be more straight, but here they can be kind of rounded at the end. This is not bad. Okay. Poke it in. Alright, there you go. That's how you sculpt some fly wings. If that stuff is too extreme for you, you could always go in with your silicone shaper and kind of smooth it a bit. Like those little pokey pokies. Take some of the suggestion of that texture out and make it a little smoother, but it still leaves a bit. Just sweep down with the silicone shaper. Smooth it out a little bit. Leave a bit of that texture. Bob's your uncle. Fly wings. Okay, so the other way that I thought about doing this, just say this is your fly... Oh, actually, no. I'm going to get a different piece of plastic card. I was going to just tear this shit off and just throw it away and be like, I don't even care. But I'm actually kind of loving it now. Let's see if I can screw it up. Just going to smoothen those in-between section. Those barriers between the different cells kind of whatever okay so that's that's one way to do fly wings should i leave these here a suggestion is not it where is our focus the grid is in focus so anything on the grid should be mostly in focus Okay, so let's just say that this is your fly wing. Oh, that's a cool fly wing. So another way that you could do it, if you want to be obsessive, is that you wanted you could um, take little snakes of green stuff and just kind of define the boundaries of those little cells that we were doing before. So something like that. Something like this. Just like think of this as the, the veins between them. Want a piece of plastic card? Okay, that looks fucking horrible. Sections. I should just make that one. Whatever. I'm gonna push it like this. 
scratching. Has it hurt a bit? Has it hurt a bit? Oh, the problem is that this is not shaped like a fly wing. Okay, so with something like this, you could even get fancy and you could like draw on the sections that you want before you go in and do it. You could be like, okay, well, there's going to start here, and then this one's going to go here, and the next section's going to be like this, and then, anyway, whatever. You could, like, plan it out like that, or it gets gross down here. But then what you do is once you've, I don't, oh, shit, you can't even see that, can you? So once you've, like, drawn it on, you just take your green stuff, and you just kind of, like, follow the lines of the different sections. You're, you're basically drawing this, the parts, these parts, the parts in between, like the the raised lines, and you're leaving these parts blank, plastic card. You're basically sticking on the veins. between them. And then you go in with, uh, you could do it with a large ball burnisher. And you could do this kind of thing to blend them into the, the cells in between. That's rough, and then you'd go and clean it up with a, a silicone shaper. Like that. So that gives you like the rough shape, and then you take your magic tool. I'll use the shitty one, okay, because you don't have the magic tool. And then you just kind of paint them down. So smooth out those, the bolly bits that you just made. And you're just transitioning them into the flat of the plastic card to make those kind of veins between the the membranes between the wing sections. This might be a little tall, like I think I, I made it a little high. You could do less, but yeah, that's, that's another way you could do it. So you can sculpt them completely from scratch like that, or you can take a piece of plastic card. I don't want to do this whole fucking thing, but God, if you're going to make me do the whole fucking thing. Mostly because I've done a terrible job planning this wing. Ah. You're ugly. Okay. You need to draw out your wing better, and it'll come... What you could do is you could just go on the internet, and you're just like, hey... Oh, where the hell did that go? Hey, go away. Hey, look at this cool picture of a fly wing. I'm just going to trace this literally onto my plastic card. And then the green stuff is like these lines here. And the white plastic card in between is these sections. And Bob's your uncle. Just trace it exactly onto this. And it'll work way better than this. Anyway, you got the idea. So, now onto something more interesting and more easy to sculpt for Nurgle. That is how to sculpt fly wings. Okay, but what if your fly needs some eyes? What then? How do you give it those creepy compound eyes?
This part, super easy. So all you gotta do, compound eyes, take a ball of green stuff, stick it right there. Take another ball of green stuff, roughly the same size. Well, they are roughly the same size. What do you know? So there are your two fly eyes. Now, challenge is that you just put your fingerprints all over them. So with a smooth spoon tool... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Fingerprints are probably fine. The challenge is that you want to keep these ball-shaped. You don't want to flatten them too much. So I'm cleaning them up because, I don't know, I'm obsessive. You got two eyes. This is the easiest thing in the world. So you go and you get one of these tools or one of these tools, a ball burnisher tool. I don't even think I need to show you how to do this. I think you already know what's going to happen. You take the ball, you lube it up, and then you just go in here and very lightly, you just tap it. Now you don't want to tap too hard because it's going to flatten out the ball too much. And once you've got this texture on, um, you're basically making pips on a golf ball is what you're doing here. Golf ball pips, they can pass as a compound eye. Look, out, look up a compound eye. This is like, oh wait, is this a compound eye? Oh god, or spider eyes, compound eyes. This is literally what it looks like. If you do notice that you're poking too hard on one side and it's poking out the other side, just go and poke another little compound thing on the other side. The key thing is that you don't want to make it look like you're poking them in rows or anything. you got to make them kind of random. Not random, but more kind of hexagonally opposed to each other. Does that make any sense? Than in like a, a quadrilateral grid, because a quadrilateral grid will not look like eyes. There you go. Got some fly eyes. Want to put them on a space marine? No problem. Here's our handy dandy space marine stand-in. But he's gonna he's gonna become a Nurgle worshiper. What a weird little dude he is, worshiping Nurgle. Get oh, get out of here. Get your ball of green stuff. Stick it on his face. Okay, that's not working. So the reality is that um, this was easier to do because there's more green stuff there. It's a big giant ball. These balls are small. So what? What you always want to do with green stuff, if you're having trouble sculpting something, put the green stuff on the miniature in the rough shape that you want. Say a compound eye. And then let this dry, and this can become... Fuck. This can become a um, an armature that you can... God damn! Sculpt on later. This stuff is really not sticking anymore. It's because it's been out for a while. So I'm going to have to rebuild this compound eye on his face. Put this one on. You wanted comedically large eyes, right? So there's his weird bug eyes, and then you just literally come in with your mother Hubbard. Come in with your uh, ball burnisher and just poke in those compound eyes. Just as easy as that. These are crappy because. So yeah, you could like do a smaller. I'll show you. You could do like a uh, a little lump of green stuff on there, as kind of your armature that you're going to sculpt on later. So you could put on a ball about that big. If you're looking for an eye this big, let that harden, let it stick, and then do the a thin layer of green stuff to do the compound eye over top. But yeah, basically like that. Freaky compound. That looks horrible. But more like this. <laughs> and shove it on a space marine. Okay? So that's how we do fly eyes. Super easy. Uh, next... Nurgle's got a lot of grubs. 
slash intestines. Again, this seems like something that's so easy that I don't need to show you how to do it. But um, you can always get a, a tentacle roller. Um, I got mine from Green Stuff Industries. And if you're using a tentacle roller, you just get this. You let it harden a bit, and then you, you roll it out. So here's your little grub. But not necessary. Because if you want a grub, you could also do this with like spare green stuff if you run if you sculpt up more green stuff than you need and then you have like extra bits, just like put them on a piece of plastic like this. Because when they're dry you can flex it and pop them off and then stick them on stuff. But sculpting grubs is easy. It's just like this. Also, if you don't have a tentacle roller and you want a tentacle roller, go to the dollar store, buy yourself a plastic comb. Um, that's a one side of a tentacle roller. And then you can just get two plastic combs and put them like face on face and then roll them and there's your tentacle roller. Or you can just like have the comb lying flat and then just roll your green stuff on one side as long as like the part that isn't on the... just say this is the tines of the... This is the tines of the, um, this will look better. Here are the, the, ish, matter of fact, the tines of the comb are pointing this way. Take your green stuff, put it across like this, roll it like this, and you'll get those lines across it. Um, and then you can, if you're using your finger, you're going to get fingerprints on this side. It won't be so bad. The longer you let your green stuff dry, the less you'll get fingerprints on it, and the more this stuff will pick up as you push on it. But even if one side is like, got the lines on it and one side doesn't just put the side that has your fingerprints on the bottom and leave the other side up and I just wiped fucking hand cream all over myself but if you don't want to use a tentacle roller you can always just put like a snake of green stuff on something use a knife tool to cut these sections into it to make it look grubby or intestine like again this is so easy I don't know why I'm showing you and then you just kind of follow each um, line down and then you just kind of poke it underneath to get, make it look like it's rounded <laughs> who needs a tentacle roller you can sculpt some grubs whatever you do don't buy your tentacle roller from green stuff world those guys are assholes I bought mine from green stuff industries um, and yeah, I think they have a very budget website and I, I was like, oh, I'm going to try this and see if it works, but, um, it did show up. It took a while to ship. I think it's not like their main game anymore, but it did ship. So I don't know. Worked for me and they're in the U S so that helps if you're in the U S. So I'm just kind of like following these lines around down to the end of the grub. So this is this could be a tentacle, this could be a grub, this could be a, an intestine, whatever you're feeling. Light pressure, you don't have to press very hard, that's the key thing. If you press too hard, you're just going to like cut it, which is not what we want. Okay. Grubby grub grub. And then like the key to getting it to look really curved if it looks too flat on the side is you take your knife tool and you were cutting like this before flip it and see the pokey bit so the blade is facing up and then take the the pokey bit put the flat part of the blade onto the plastic card and then find where it touches and just poke in at the bottom to get that last curve in And that'll give the impression that it's curving under. There you go. There's your grubby grub. Or a tentacle. Or an intestine coming out of someone. Easy. Okay, next. So next up on the Nurgle menu. The Mark of Nurgle. Da, da, da. Easiest thing in the world to sculpt. Let's make the mark of Nurgle. So we're going to smooth this out.
Okay, this is where stamps come in. So stamps are just the ends of pens that you obsessively hoard to get all your different size stamps. So just the ends of pens, um, and then you gotta pick the size you want. So we're gonna go for a a large one. I'll go for that. If you want to go really large, you can stamp this end. But yes. Oh, or that. That could go really large. So Nurgle's mark, it's just three circles, right? So you get your tool, you can lube it up a bit, and then you just stamp it. One. Two, three. Now there you go, Mark and Urgle. Bam. The inner, I don't know, circumference, whatever of this is pretty thick. So once you do that, you can just kind of go and smooth it out if you want. Depending on the stamp, you're going to get a different shape. So let's try a different stamp. Maybe slightly smaller. Here's an interesting one. Here's another interesting one. These are like the ends that are felt tip pens, the ends that are mechanical pencils. You can get all kinds of stamps. Okay, I'm gonna clear this up. Okay, cleaned up. And then uh, you can try out this end. There's one mark. Let's just say you wanted one that was smaller. Try out this end. Easiest thing in the world to sculpt. Just stamp it with the end of a pen. All right, what about pustules? Nurgle pustules. So, I've been thinking about this one. This one I don't actually know how to sculpt, but I'm gonna figure it out. Let's say we want a big honking pustule. We're putting it on a giant beast or something. We want that to be our pustule. Stamp it with the end of a pen. And then what I would do is you could take like a, a ball burnisher tool. If you want to get kind of like a weird texture inside. Actually, that's a bit big. Do like... Give it kind of like a weird texture because it's gross. Mm, nasty. Or if you want to smooth it out, you can do that too. So get a bit of a texture on it, smooth it a bit. And then for the edge, you want to kind of like bring this edge in. So I would silicone shape it. You want to kind of this gross flesh around it, kind of paint it in and up to make that uh, perimeter less regular. If you want it more curved, you can like go in there with like some kind of spoon or like concave shape tool. And kind of like get the curve in there, plump it up a bit. Yeah. 
You can take the back side of the curve and kind of paint in the flesh. Get that puckered look. It's looking a little gross, right? If you want the edges to be like scalloped or whatever, you just kind of take the curve and bump it down. You want pustules on your pustule? We can do that. Again, I just recommend stamping them. Like, just like a really small stamp like this, that can get you far when it comes to gross pustule things. Just the end of a pen. And then the key is just like dirtying them up a bit so they don't look quite so perfect. And you can do that with a very small ball burnisher. And then kind of like do the the edges. What you can do is like kind of poke in, oh god, I'm destroying it, and then kind of bring up the, no, I fucking, I fucked that up. I do what I did with the bigger one, is that I would, what I would do is I wouldn't fucking worry about it. I'd just stamp it and call it a day. But if you want to be fancy, stamp the interior, the pustule, and then if you want to detail it, detail the inside of it before you fuck around with the outside, and then you can kind of like push in the outside. Puckered flesh around it. Something like that. But yeah, pustules are easy to do with stamps. So use stamps, stamp out your pustules, should be okay. What other gross stuff does Nurgle have? Tentacles, Nurgle tentacles, you just use this. You've got the weird fly shit. Um, Nurgle has horns, but like horns are very easy to sculpt in case you need to see them. Um, I would suggest you start with a piece of plastic card that you get into the rough shape of the horn you want. Stick it on your model, get some green stuff, coat your horn with the green stuff. I thought there'd be a lot more material in this video, but I feel like there isn't that much Nurgle stuff to sculpt. There's like the whole like stretched flesh, but that's mostly just using a silicone shaper to paint putty around. Um, if you want to have like spinal columns on your guys or stitches, I've made um, videos about how to do those too. You can check those out. That's the kind of Nurgle you're going for. So yeah, just get like a rough shape and then just um, get like a knife tool. And just, again, lightly, not too hard. Just get the, the kind of stirrations you want in the horn. Don't do too much or it'll look too gnarled. And then once you've got them cut in, just go back with the smooth tool and just kind of smooth it out so that it looks a little more natural. And you can go back and cut them again, smooth them, just do it like that and you should get a good texture. Okay. What other Nurgle things could we do? If you want like rotting flesh, that's pretty easy. You wanted some intestines inside a guy and some rotting flesh around it. So there's his intestines. So I would let this dry if this was going to be like his exposed intestines. You do the thing we did with the the maggot where you 
you give it some texture, some rings. Yeah, the secret to like having stuff exposed and like rotting flesh is you want to sculpt the interior detail first and then come and do like the, the rotting flesh around it after. Anyway, whatever, those are intestines. But for the sake of our video, so you do that and then you just kind of do a ring around it. Smooth the outside of the ring into your model. Silicone shapers are really useful for this. If I had one, there it is. So smoothing this part, actually, you know what? Um, flat one is pretty good for this. My green stuff's getting a little hard because I've been working with it for a while. So yeah, you can smear this stuff down on the outside and then come and clean it up after with a smooth, a rounded silicone shaper. So just smooth that into the model. And then just, I don't know, draw the owl. So the flesh you can kind of kind of messed up along the edge. Again this would be easier if these were dry but whatever. Let's kind of get it rough. Some gross bits in it. Make it kind of look rough and jagged around the edge. And then the key is just kind of bringing, you, you, you sculpt it and then you kind of bring it in. So you just kind of paint it in around the wound or the, the exposed part. So you're kind of like closing it in. He's also getting a bit of pucker there, and that's nice. The key to puckered skin is just silicone shapers. Like, this is like stretch skin we're getting here. You don't want it to have, like, these uniform lines, so kind of smooth those out, make it a little less uniform. But yeah, just kind of push it in. And then if it gets too close there, like it's getting kind of smeared down, you can go in with, like, a, a pointy tool and kind of lift it a bit. But you don't want it to like blossom out too far from the exposed part. So I don't know if that needed to be showed, but now you've seen it. Don't know if you really got anything out of that, but here it is. Yeah, just paint with your silicone shapers. They're there for a reason. It's the best tool for sculpting any kind of flesh. Yeah, and if you want, like, taut flesh, it's all about these. It's all about just painting. Poke in that end, stretch out this way. Get some more stretch marks in there. Yeah, these are the best tools for the job. No, I'm just fucking around. Alright, let's see if there's anything else I can show you Nurgle related. Got your grub, got your horn. Horn got a little fucked up. 
got your pustule. We did our, our mark of Nurgle. Um, yeah, just like rotted flesh. If you want to just like rot this flesh, the best way to do it is just to get, like if this is the flesh of the creature, just get a ball burnisher and just kind of like poke in a rotted bit and then take something that's kind of pointed. How was that? Give it some kind of like ripped edges so it's not quite so round. But yeah, ball burnishers are your friend. Like you can kind of like dig in like that and get another one here. And it gives this kind of like stretch bit in between. And then like rip out a part of it. Get a smaller one beside it. Um, if you want to do like a like a, a stretch tear, just get one of these and just do a line like that and stretched on either side, kind of stretch tear. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, but yeah, ball burnishes are really good for that kind of thing. It seems there's some of that on the plague bearers where they have like these these holes in them. The only thing with these is that the the sides can cup because you pushed it in. So if you want to make it look more kind of realistic, just flatten out the sides with something else once you push it in, so it doesn't cup in as much. And get like a knife tool and kind of like do like a wound or like a puncture or something. And again, flatten the sides. You can do a, a bunch of these. Give like stitches effect kind of, sort of. Again, I did stitch flesh in another video, so you can look that up. See if there's anything else that Nurgle does. Eyes, like a, I don't know. If you want to do an eye on like a, um, a plague bear, because they have like the one eye, let's do it on here. This green stuff's starting to go, but I think we can still use it. So you want to cycle P and I on your plague bearer? We can do that. It all starts with, can you guess? A stamp. That's right. So smooth out your green stuff. Um, get a stamp. I want a decent sized one. Uh, hmm. Whatever. I'll, I'll work with it. So there's your Cyclopean eye, and what you want to do is you want to bring it out at the sides. And you want to fold it in everywhere else. I guess that doesn't look that... hold on. You kind of smear this out to the sides, but make sure you keep the curve on it. Again, dick around inside and then fix the outside. Okay, making that kind of almond shape, sort of. And then you just hide your mistakes by bringing in the eyelid. it down because I think they do like a, a shape kind of like that. See? If you don't like it you can like bring up the green stuff and push it in around more. There's an eye. It's a little messy but oh, where's that tool? cup on the silicone shaper and kind of get the cup in there to mess around, make it more rounded. I 
Anyway, that's how we get like a cyclopean eye. Oh, and sometimes on plague bears you see like a hole within a hole. Um, like you'll have like something like this, a gaping wound, and then you'll have like something like this. Wait, is that how it works? Show me again. Oh, you'll have like the tissue inside exposed, but then you'll have like another hole in here. Like layers of exposure. So that's kind of how you do that. And then if you want to make it look even more like it's two different layers, you can poke in under the first one to find the boundary between them. That's like a rotten sore right there. What's the opposite of a pustule? A pustule sticks out. This thing sticks in. Yeah, so dig under that top layer to differentiate them. Okay, so it makes it a little wider than you want, but you can definitely see that um, the sore inside. And then you can just kind of bring in the skin. You can pucker it in with a ball burnisher, or you can use a silicone shaper. Oh, well, that's looking gross. So you can see there's like a, a rotten sore inside. I don't know how well the light. Again, the sun is slanting in. See that? Kind of like two layers of sore in there. Yeah, so that's another thing we see on the plague bearers. Let's check the blight kings and see if there's anything that I'm missing. But yeah, a lot of the the like rotten flesh on Nurgle is just poking in with these things. Blight kings. Let's see what's going on here. These guys are amazing. Uh, yeah, we did We did the pustules. Oh, I guess one thing that I'm seeing on these guys with the pustules is kind of like the eyeball. Where you... You got your pustule that you stamp in. But then you want the skin around it to look kind of messed up. Because the pustule is like expanding, right? But you want this stuff to be kind of like... There's the little one. You want it to be kind of like stretched a bit this way. And then like... Also like... Flesh kind of like puckered. You have another stretchy thing down here. But then the flesh puckers in. Oh, it's looking gross! So yeah, that's just how you do that. And you can give the pustule some texture so it doesn't look quite so clean. But yeah, the stretch flesh goes a long way, and it literally it's just... You can poke in with the uh, the tip of like a silicone shaper or something to get the, the ridge kind of towards the, the wound, and then you can just kind of like dig in and pull out to get like a a cut. What else we got on these guys? Tentacles, we've kind of been over. They've got a lot of rotted parts, which are done kind of like this. Or like with these like pokey bits. Um, I think that's pretty much Nurgle. Got like horns, but the horns are super easy. Or you can just steal horns off of other stuff. Got like the grubs. Okay, well, I think that's it. I think that's how to sculpt Nurgle. I think we did a pretty good survey there. Hopefully you found this helpful, and hopefully this is a good substitute for having an actual stream. Because we weren't able to get to that. Holy shit. That's a really loud loon. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll stop recording now, because uh, this is pretty long. But hopefully this is has been as helpful as having a stream. Um, and now we got finally got that video about how to sculpt Nurgle shit. So, happy sculpting. Hopefully this helps you. And, yeah, once I'm...
Whoa, buddy. And once I'm back in the uh, the city, we'll do a proper stream. But I'm glad that we were able, oh, that I was able to do this. And I'm sorry that y'all weren't here cheering me on and I wasn't answering your questions, but we'll get back to that. Okay. Happy sculpting. Bye.